another session of the Courtroom of Public Opinion, and today's topic is racism. Um, we, for everybody, know about the Donald Sterling um, situation down there in Los Angeles. He's Donald Sterling, as everyone knows. Everybody probably heard of it about the uh, Los Angeles Clippers owner who was caught on the videotape and saying some racially, you know, things. Racially charged comments and, concerning. Um, African Americans, blacks, right. Turning Magic Johnson, right, right. Um, and about that is that recently he had an interview on Anderson Cooper, CNN, yeah. and this man, John, I don't see the sincerity. I really didn't see the sincerity in that. In the clip, he went from being supposedly teary-eyed mm -hmm. to a vitriolic rant and rave about Magic Johnson, about HIV, about him not doing anything with yeah, the black minute. community. Talk about it. He goes around having sex with all these women around the country. That's what he, that's what he says. As if he knew or knew or knows uh, his personal right. uh, behavior. Right, exactly. And he just shows... He, what Donald Sterling shows is that... We're not going to shift the focus. We're going to keep it on Donald Sterling. We need to keep on Donald Sterling because Donald Sterling is the, is the example of many CEOs and people that are in control, that, that, are, that are business owners that you have to deal with. And he's like... What he said on that, what, what V, whatever his girlfriend was named, um, what, she, what she did, she recorded something that he believed. He believed it. Yeah. He, now, he claims that he's not aware he of the recording, but uh, you've got to be either um, a person who is extremely naive, or you've got to be blind and lost of hearing to not know someone's recording over a hundred videos. Well, John, I'm going to say this here, John. She's 31, young, beautiful, sexy woman. Excuse me. And he's an old man. And he was in love with that woman. My granddaddy was 75 years old, married a 35-year-old woman. They stayed married for 25 years. Yeah. And, uh... But your granddaddy loved Marsh Bell and Donald <laughs> Okay? I doubt I very mean, seriously if my grandfather would have lost all of his senses behind the 35 years. Well, I mean, look at Don Sterling. I said, your, your granddad, I met him. He's a handsome man. At, at, as a matter of fact, I met him when he was like 100 years old. Because we had a birthday party. Donald Sterling, you, we, I don't know. Maybe, maybe she was in love. But she did say love in the, um, I love you, you know. Love is good at any age. However, however, Donald Sterling, what he said in that video, that's what he meant. He meant it, um, whether, I mean, he doesn't say it was a Freudian slip, and no, so no. Uh, we only can assume that it was something that was in him that mm -hmm. just had to come out. It just had to come out. Show it off. Locks up for so long, and right. it breaks it loose. Right. Hey, it's, but, all, it's too late. The horse is out the barn. Yeah, but you know what? You look at how he dogged Magic Johnson out. I mean, it went from like, oh, I'm crying, to like, I can't stand that Negro. What has he done? It was a done? spew of venom. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, you know, you saw him like, wait a minute. He lost all kinds of sincerity. I didn't believe him anyway. But when he talked about Magic Johnson, what Mag and Magic Johnson, he's done a lot for African Americans. He has. I mean, we're talking a about, lot. yeah, he loved a lot. Because he put businesses in areas and in, 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 in cities that where they didn't have no jobs. Restaurants. Restaurants, uh, movie gyms, theaters. movie theaters. I mean, just his presence as a as a businessman mm -hmm. in a society that's predominantly white dominated mm -hmm. uh, says to a lot of young children that, hey, listen, uh, you too can do the very same thing. I, I mean, Magic Johnson is actually a success story. You think about well, it. Like, you know, here you are in NBA, and what happened to most players after when they leave? Com compar comparatively, more of a success than 
Donald Sterling. Yeah, sure enough. You know, so here it is, part only of the Dodgers. I believe it's the Dodgers that he part owner and part owner of the Lakers, Magic Johnson, and have all these movie theaters, restaurants, and Starbucks, and some other businesses that they have. And you're gonna criticize him because he has he's HIV positive, man. You kind of like sunk your own battleship. You <laughs> sunk your own battleship. So I think he's he's just uh, uh, he's an example of many of our people that are CEOs, and they have this kind of viewpoint. I think. Right? Hey, look, racism still exists. He's he's a proof of it. If we had more Magic Johnsons and less Donald Sterlings, the world would be a better place. Well, that's a that's a good. Well, we're gonna do a show about that, but we need to have more minority-owned businesses such as Magic Johnson, and it doesn't have to be on Magic Johnson's level. Magic Johnson had a huge start. I mean, you got multi-million-dollar contract with the Lakers, and then you go from there to to what you're doing. He did a he's a success story. Okay. However, we can. We need more minority-owned businesses, and that's the key. To where instead of minority-owned businesses, a black-owned business would hire sixty percent of its staff would be African Americans. This would reduce the amount of those that are unemployed. However, there's another there's another situation that we're going to deal with later on in one of our other videos is about the procurements and contracts. Procurements and contracts mm -hmm. over eight. Hundred million dollars a year in goods and services alone in America through our United States government, and a small percentage of that goes to non whites in a country that's relatively 50% non white. Mm -hmm. The foundation of the procurement system is designed to deny the contracts to non-whites. Mm -hmm. um, and then oftentimes when they receive the contract, bid rigging takes place in order to overshadow and still, once again, deny the, uh, the acquisition of the contract. Well, Mar Malcolm X, one of my favorites, I like, I like his theory. Um, or, or like, like what he wanted to do was that we need to have more independence to where you're, where African Americans are not dependent upon um, the white dollar. And that being dependent upon the gut, having government contracts is not the same as being dependent upon the white dollar. And what I mean the white dollar is that you're dependent upon a white job, going to a white business to where you got to go, this is where, you, this is the only place you got to go. What if there was 13% of the businesses and corporations were black owned. I mean, would we That'd have be a wonderful thing? Is it possible in America? Well, with the justice system that we got now, no. I mean, Donald Sterling, Donald Sterling was found guilty of discrimination. He was found guilty of discrimination in the court of law. He was found guilty. But what was his, what was the punishment? Two point seven million dollars. Yeah, Two point five for Two the, five for the the plaintiff, five million for the attorney. Yeah, but what the, was the punishment enough? Obviously not, because it occurred again. It occurred again. Sure enough, it occurred again. So, and the reason behind a punitive damage is such that it should be sufficient enough to deter the action. Well, let me tell you what. Let me tell you. There's a. You gave me this term. You told me this term. I'm going to bring it back to you. You know, And I don't like, I'm trying not to say this word that many times. However, when we're dealing with racism, you're just going to have to lay it out how it is. We call it a nigger check. You remember the nigger check? A nigger check. All right. Please tell the viewers what a nigger check well, is. Well, in South Carolina, there's a term that um, often has, um, in the back room, been used and it's called a nigger check. That simply means that for the same offense, an African American gets a smidgen, small portion of what a white would get for winning the case of the same offense. Say that. A nigger check. <laughs> a nigger check. Nigger check. Look, we just going to give you just enough. Just enough. The thing, and you think you got something. Just enough to stop crying and get up out of here. Yeah, get out of there. That's the nigger check. 
And so that so you're not what those people got, they got nigga checks. They got nigga checks. And they thought they wanted something, but you know what they should but the punishment did not fit. This man here is worth a half a billion or more. Or rather, yeah, I think a half a billion or more. Well, so the 2.5 and the 5 million, I mean, still, what, what was the percentage of that? The time it took to fight the case and the interest he would have got off of his total enterprise would have been more than the amount that he gave in the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so he really didn't lose anything. He was at time. Right, he knew it. So, so we want what so on the the Donald Sterling case is just emblematic of a of a of a country that continues to continue to practice racism. And um, until we actually deal with it, until somebody I always say that somebody needs to go to jail. Well they do. You violating somebody you violating the civil rights. Somebody needs to go to jail. One of the other things that comes off in this Donald Sterling case is the fact that when something like that is done, we often think, well, you know, this person is just awful and um, we need to wipe them off the face of the earth. But that's only a small portion of what's happening at a larger scale. We have major corporations like Wells Fargo, for instance. Uh, they say Donald Sterling's case, the award of $2.5 million was the largest in the history. Well, it might have been the largest in the history at the time, uh, dealing with a HUD violation, a housing and urban development violation. Wells Fargo just recently had a $175 million settlement with the Department of Justice for the exact same thing, a racial surtax, charging African Americans and Latinos uh, a higher interest rate and a higher closing costs simply because of the color of their skin. And so Wells Fargo incidentally has also made the statement that Wells Fargo loves to hate niggers and hate the love niggers. You can check it out on YouTube, www.youtube.com. Go to uh, Wells Fargo, the N-word, uh, check it out for yourself. But the parallel is that there has been a far worse offense by Wells Fargo than Donald Sterling. However, uh, nobody wants to say anything about that. No, no, they won't say nothing about it. But like uh, Malcolm X said, hey, follow the money. You follow the money, you can get a lot of answers, a lot of answers. So on, on, on with all of that, with all that said, uh, in order for us to end racism, we need to expose um, these judges, um, these um, businesses, these company owners that are that are performing these these heinous acts. And somebody, I mess. I believe somebody. Look, until you start, until somebody start going doing some prison time, you do about violating the rights. When there's a threat of going to jail, Donald Sterling, should you be convicted? Should we go back to court again? We putting you behind in jail. That's when I believe you're gonna start stop seeing these. Look, that may not end their racism, but I'll tell you what. Um, it, it, it would have crawled back into his hole. It crawled back into his hole. And Donald Sterling's, um, Donald Sterling, the way they dealt with him, the NBA players, the uh, NBA commissioner, the public, the sponsors, was, uh, it was appropriate. Mm -hmm. And it needs to happen to more of the companies that do the same thing. They need to simply be just like. Donald Sterling was removed. These companies, the entire executive staff who's aware of, they should be removed and the company should be simply dissolved. Mm -hmm. It should be dissolved from the standpoint that if the company is to continue, it has to be taken over by someone else and not allow the same administration to continually perpetuate whether it's the glass ceiling, whether it's the racially uh, charged um, uh, human resource uh, when it comes to payments, salaries. I mean, there's a lot of things that that should be addressed. And while we can't in America cure everything overnight, when we continually make it clear, crystal clear, that the way we dealt with Donald Sterling is the way that every form of uh, vitriolic racism. 
that shows up like this, we'll deal with it the same way. That consistency will turn things around and eventually we'll find ourselves not having to deal with it at all. It's 50 years uh, since the Civil Rights Act, it's been a long time and we're still dealing with this. 